Do you want me to forget the welcome to Denali events or just start right again? Um, I would keep the welcome to Denali events. Yeah, basically start over. Start over? Yeah. Okay, I can manage that. Welcome to Denali Events. My name is Reen Ann Carroll, and I'm speaking today with Charlotte Bird. She's just come back from a 10-day stay in Denali Park uh, as on an artist in residency. And uh, Charlotte, why don't you tell us why you applied for a residency in Denali Park? The opportunity to spend 10 days at the East Fork Cabin um, at mile 43 was um, such an interesting idea and we have, Charles, my husband Charles and I have spent a fair amount of time in the park over a very long time but we've never had a chance to be in that part of the park. Um, we've been at the west end a lot and at the east end a fair amount and this is right in the middle where you don't get to you, you don't get to stop there very often. Um, the artist in residency is um, an incredible opportunity. Um, it's 10 days. It's essentially no responsibility except being there. Um, at the very end, an hour presentation. This 15 minutes and donating a piece of artwork by the end of the calendar year. Easy. Wonderful. Um, and so this was this. I wanted to do this because the park is really important to me. The, um, the images of the park are um, personally very rewarding and I wanted to see what I could do to synthesize um, what I do as an artist and what I would see and feel in 10 days in the park. So when you went in you probably had some predetermined ideas about what you might think about doing and studying. How much did that change being actually being out there? Oh, a lot. Um, this is a long anticipated um, 10 days and I, I'm not sure I had um, specific things I wanted to do, but certainly my expectations that it was going to be wonderful were very high. Um, as, the, as we pulled in to um, the cabin, um, driving in, this is August, the colors start to change. Um, it's a very rich uh, time for, for color and form. And as the days progressed, I came really clearly to, um, to want to take pictures to document the color changes so that I could develop a palette to document the um, lines and shapes and forms that I was seeing so that I had reference points for making the, the piece to donate. Um, Can you kind of elaborate? I mean, you're showing, you're telling us about what you've looked at, but how is this going to fit in the process that you will, that, <clears throat> where will you go from, from here? Um, you and I are both dyers, and we, um, we dye and print our own fabric. All of those 700 plus images will um, pretty much inform the patterns that I develop. Um, I'm kind of a magpie, and I really like rocks. And so I really did focus on the river rocks um, a lot. I'm thinking in terms of um, using a rock form, possibly a 3D form. Um, 
I'm not sure where it's going to go. But from here, I'll take all of those photographs and sort of spread them out in my, in my studio and look at them for a while, um, develop some marks to print um, from those, those images, probably 20 to 30 yards of fabric later. Um, I'll have a palette to work with and f figure out at that point what speaks. I, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a nut, you know, it's a three or four month process. <laughs> Something better come up. <laughs> so how do you see this differing from work that you've done previously? How do you, what, what are some things that might have changed? Um, Certainly the palette will change. Um, I, I live in Southern California and color is very intense and bright and um, full spectrum kinds of colors. The palette here is grayed and um, much more subtle. Um, we've gone through, the, the colors have gone from a very bright, um, intense summer green through orange and yellow to red and now maroon and brown um, as, the, um, as time passes and, and it gets colder. Um, I don't know where it's going yet. So how do you maintain that sense of the colors and images that you worked with here when you get back to sunny San Diego? That's what those 700 pictures are for, <laughs> among other things. Um, I spend a, a fair amount of time up here with you and other people um, over the, in various seasons of the year. The color keeps coming back. Um, and I find that most of the dye work I do is in this palette now, um, more than more than the very bright colors of, of um, Southern California. To, to talk a little bit, go back for your question about um, how it's going to change, the last couple of years I've been working mostly with um, lichen forms and moss forms um, and shapes. And I think there's, I'm going to be doing some different kinds of shapes, perhaps leaves and um, certainly the rock shapes um, are going to um, reappear. Perhaps not in natural colors. Um, I'm thinking in some ways in terms of taking the palette and making um, rep relatively representational forms in whatever color appeals to me. Um, but in that, you know, that autumn palette. Mm -hmm. So we've been kind of talking about the specific pieces. Do you have some kind of large overriding ideas that you try to convey in your work in general? Um, I'm really interested in the science um, of climate change and, and just sort of the interaction of plants and animals. Um, and I'm I'm hoping that um, some of what I some of what comes out of this um, talks about um, making science um, appealing through the artwork. Um, the climate is changing, and and it's not just the seasonal changes that we're seeing right now, but it's also um, the changes because of um, global climate change and those kinds of issues. Um, I've been reading a lot of, of fairly um, simple science, <laughs> you know, um, layman's science um, about climate change and that sort of thing. And I'm hoping that something a series of pieces will come out of um, using this color palette to convey 
um, a deeper science meaning. So do you have particular scientists that you have spent some time with that have been influential on, on how you think and what you hope to be able to do in the future? Carol McIntyre um, is a um, scientist with the National Park Service and she, her, her focus, personal focus is on um, golden eagles, but she has a vast knowledge of all kinds of um, the related ecology um, and I've been asking her a lot of questions um, and she's she's been very generous with resources um, to to think about um, directions a more scientific direction well <laughs> I'm not sure where we go from here. Um, what about actually living out in wilderness as opposed to just spending time in a cabin somewhere in Alaska, being actually out where, where it's in wilderness as opposed to just somewhere in Alaska? So how um, probably the most valuable part of the, of the whole 10-day experience was um, being able to, there's, there's no internet, there's no telephone, there's no real access except that road corridor. Um, we spent a great deal of time deciding, we'd get up in the morning and decide what we were going to do today. So living in the moment, um, not thinking about tomorrow or the next day and not worrying about what happened um, a week ago, um, it's, a, it's a valuable kind of centering um, process. Um, we got to listen to the very subtle sounds of the quiet. Um, it's really quiet out there, and then it's not. Um, if you can slow down long enough to and calm down long enough. There's the sound of the river, the sound of the sow bear and her cubs flinging rocks down the hill across the creek from us. Um, so tell me why you're recording sound. Oh, yeah. Um, we're, I have an idea that um, and that I want to tr pursue, which includes an installation of sound with whatever the um, the visual piece is. Um, there's something really um, compelling about those subtle sounds of water running um, in a creek or rushing in a in a big river. Um, the sounds of the cranes going over um, as they head south this fall. Um, so I don't know where that's going to go, but I want to try to um, incorporate sound into some piece um, or a series of pieces. Um, it's going to be Part of why we, we did a, a, a lot of sound recording was because we don't know where it's going to go. Um, and we didn't want to have to <laughs> make it up later. Although I'd come back out for 10 days, it would be really easy. I got more to do. <laughs> you know, when I go hiking with you, I, I am aware that you see the world in a way differently than many people do. So kind of describe, you know, a day as, as it progresses and what kinds of things you look at. We're close to the end of our time, so I'm um, sorry. I'm really hard um, to, to get to go to a specific destination because I get sidetracked with the patterns on the, on the ground and the flowers going by and the lines in the rocks and um, I can spend 45 minutes going 
45 feet because I've stopped and looked at things and um, pattern and line are things that um, keep me um, entertained most of the time. Well, thank you so much. An archival version is available to stream on demand anytime on the live stream site and the park website. So you can see this. It's done. We did it. <laughs>